Okay, so you're doing your three minute thesis or FameLab presentation. How do you do the performance that keeps the audience engaged and excited to keep watching you? Today, we're talking about the performance. If you're new here, this is STEM Venturist and we are all about trying to help scientists be better scientists, whether that's inside or outside academia. So if you want more better presentation tips just like this video, or if you want to know how to write better, get more grants, get more funding, progress up the academic ladder per se, then make sure to subscribe because we're providing content every week to two weeks. Okay, so quickly, if you did miss the last video, it was all about the common mistakes that I see with people doing a three minute thesis or fame lab competition. So if you didn't see it, go back, check it out. There's a lot of tips to really boost the structure and content of your three minute thesis so you come across really well. Today's video though is really about the performance itself and what you can do to make sure that you present as good as you can on the day and so that you have the best chance of winning or at least making an impact that people will remember. So the first point is to dress to impress. Now with any type of presentation, you're going to be physically in front of an audience and what you're wearing is going to send messages to the audience. So you really wanna be sure or really think about what you are portraying to the audience and what that's saying. So if you come in and you're super relaxed and casual, you know, maybe that fits into the type of talk that you're doing, but if you're talking about a really serious subject, you know, maybe you don't wanna be looking a bit too casual. Maybe you wanna be looking a little bit more formal, maybe wearing a suit or wearing a, a button up type outfit or something like that. Something that, that reflects the tone and the messaging of what the presentation you are there giving. Alternatively, you can think about dressing in a way that maybe sets you apart from everyone else. So I know in the past, when I give presentations, I sort of think about what other people are likely going to wear because to be honest, uh, scientists often are usually predictable about what they want to wear, <laughs> usually a little bit more bland. So I sometimes try to set myself apart to wear something that will stand out or make myself more memorable amongst the other contestants. So that's another thing that you could potentially do. Obviously, if you've got a topic and maybe you're a field scientist, you could think about wearing your field, field gear or something that's related to your occupation if you're talking about that. Some people have just amazing uniforms or gear that they wear as part of their scientific role. So you can always use that to engage a lay audience i.e. for example if you're a, bee a beekeeper you could come out in your full beekeeper outfit that's going to make you very distinct from everyone else on the stage and make you be very memorable so there's definitely key things you can do with your outfit to make yourself stand out now obviously you also want to be comfortable i mean you can sort of go for some of these you know extravagant outfits but if it makes you feel less confident on stage that's going to come through your performance so instead you really want to pick something that not only will make you look engaging or appealing and fits the right tone, but will also make you feel comfortable. Now, for anyone who knows me very closely, they will know that I am an incredibly sweaty dude. <laughs> and this means that when I get on stage, you know, I am sweating profusely, more though than I normally am. And so if I wear a very light colored shirt um, that's very thin material, often I can get the sweat marks happening underneath my armpits. And usually this is happening before because I'm obviously like under pressure and stressed, you know, an hour, two hours beforehand. And sort of knowing that you've got these massive sweat patches under your arms and then going up on stage, it's going to wreck your confidence. So for me, and if you've got a similar problem like me of being sweaty, you know, pick something that's dark or pick a really thick material that will sort of like hide that sweat or put a jacket over the top or some type of thing that will cover that. Um, so it doesn't really come through and that you can present and use your hands during the performance um, so that you come across more engaging and you're not thinking about it in the top of your head. So think about being comfortable and think about anything that might happen, but ideally you wanna be comfortable, confident, so that you can perform the best. Okay, so if you're liking this content, make sure to subscribe to this channel. Doing so helps us amplify our message and help other scientists be better scientists and improve their presentation skills. 
So subscribe to the channel. So the second point today is to realize that nerves are normal. So it's common to be really nervous leading into a presentation. In fact, that means you're a normal human being, that's good. And in fact, you really wanna be nervous because that nervousness will actually increase your energy levels and help you perform better. So in fact, you wanna lean into those nerves and embrace them. But that being said, if you're not comfortable speaking and you do get really nervous before a presentation, there are key things that you can do to try and calm yourself down so that you can at least get up on stage and perform as best as you can. So one of the first things to do here is if you're doing a live presentation is get to the venue early. This is one to two hours beforehand depending on how much time that you've got and really just survey the landscape. So look to see where the audience will be, understand where you'll be on the stage, what equipment you'll be using, even jump on there if you've, if you've if you are doing slides, um, make sure that they're preloaded and up there if you're allowed to do that. Have you got a clicker? Is it gonna be back and forth? Are you using your hand or microphone? Or are you gonna be using a, a lapel thing? All of these different things will help you get in the right mindset and be more prepared. Because there's nothing worse than rocking up to do your presentation um, and you're expecting one thing and then something else happens. The key one being like the, the microphone, for example. Maybe you're expecting to use your hands really engagingly, or maybe you're using a prop that requires two hands and you're expecting a lapel mic, but instead they give you a handheld microphone. Now this totally changes your dynamic and you're gonna to need to adapt to that quite rapidly. And if you're trying to do this, you know, three minutes, four minutes before you get up on stage, or alternatively, what would be better if you're an hour beforehand, realize that and then practice with that. Having that sort of preparation and arriving earlier is gonna help you out and be a little bit more comfortable. Similarly, with just looking at the environment, I think getting that mindset and preparing for, okay, I'm expecting a sea of faces all around here. I know where I can stay, move in the stage without sort of constricting light or reaching outside of the microphone range. All of these things will boost your confidence and make sure that you, when you do your presentation, you're gonna be a lot more confident and ready to go. So get there a little bit early, it'll pay dividends. Now, alternatively, if you're not doing a live presentation, if you're doing a digital presentation, which this is being filmed during sort of May 2020, so during the coronavirus outbreak, we're seeing a lot of competitions move online. If you're doing digital, there's still things that you can do to be more prepared. And this would include, you know, the day before, doing all your software updates, resetting your computer, checking all your tech, aligning your camera, figure out where you're gonna set your position up, make sure you've got good lighting, make sure you've got good audio. All of those different things is the same thing as getting there early and preparing. And you wanna do this the day before, make sure that's all good, but then also maybe log in an hour beforehand and still make sure that all your equipment is up to date. Because it's nothing worse than like getting ready to go online to do all your recording, if it's live streamed, that all of a sudden something goes wrong and your computer needs a reset. Oh my God, this has happened to me recently and it's really frustrating. And then all of a sudden your nerves are like through the roof. Um, and that really doesn't help with your nerves if you're having that problem of being able to present effectively and trying to overcome you know, those nerves. A couple of other ideas that I recommend is make sure you've got a bottle of water on hand. It's nothing worse when you're sort of in a crowd or you're waiting to do your presentation and your mouth starts to dry because of the nerves. So having a bottle of water nearby can be really useful to make sure that you're rehydrated and your mouth's not dry and that will again boost your confidence. Another thing you can do is to slow down your heart rate. So as you get closer and closer, your heart rate's gonna get faster and faster. And what you'll actually notice is, if you actually concentrate on it, is you're probably actually breathing a lot quicker. So what you can do, this is a bit of a biological trick to slow down your heart rate and decrease your nervousness, is to just focus on breathing in slowly, breathe in and breathe out. And if you just focus on breathing, not only will it take your mind off the nerves of doing a presentation, but it will actually trick your body into slowing your heart rate down which will decrease your nervousness and help you perform better when you get on stage. 
And then lastly, I always recommend going to the toilet before the session starts. Um, there's nothing worse than being in the crowd or waiting for your turn to present and you feel that you need to pee and you get that nervous, I need to pee type thing. If you just go beforehand, you're decreasing your chances of that ever occurring. And again, all of these different strategies are little things that if you add up over time, will hopefully decrease your nervousness and make you perform as best as you can. All right, so if you're liking this content, make sure to like it. Again, this is gonna boost up the performance of this video in YouTube and help this get this video out to more scientists. So please like if you're liking this content. On to point number three. And lastly, we get to the final point, which is the performance itself. So when you go to do your performance and you get on stage or in front of the camera, the first thing you wanna do is make sure that you pause and get yourself in the right mindset. It's very tempting to just quickly jump on stage and you just wanna get it finished and get it over and done with. Um, but that can come across really erratic and it can sort of put the audience off a little bit. So instead what you wanna do is get in front of the camera or get on front of the stage and just take a couple of seconds, just, just pause, take a breath, look at the audience, engage with them, get some good eye contact, wait for them to sort of be quiet and look at you and then start. It allows for a better connection to the audience and really gets you a little bit mentally prepared for what's about to happen. Now it's gonna feel like an eternity if you wait three seconds before starting, but that's an eternity to you. <laughs> it will actually, won't, it'll feel completely normal to the audience. It's surprising like how just counting three seconds, one second, two second, three seconds, that's gonna feel like, I don't know, like a minute on stage, but it, it literally, it's, it's not gonna be a thing at all for the audience. So make sure to spend a bit of time just to just set yourself to get ready to deliver the talk. So having good energy levels is really important because it's the energy and how you come across to the audience that's gonna really engage them. So I commonly find that people will think that they're really energetic and they're, they're performing at a level higher than what they would normally converse with. But when they look at themselves on camera, in retrospect, if it's being filmed, you'll be surprised at how much you felt you were being energetic, but you actually weren't being energetic. So I really recommend filming yourself, presenting, doing it in a way that you think is energetic and then watch it back and see how you go. You'll be surprised at the first time you, you do this that you actually may not be as energetic as you, as you are, think you are. <laughs> so I really recommend you know, getting into it, making sure to use your body movements if that's part of your presenting style and really look at all the different audience and try to increase your energy level both through your vocals, so introducing variation, up, down, and using pauses being quiet, being louder when you're trying to make a point, all of these different things can make you more energetic and it's worthwhile focusing on trying to improve that. So record yourself, see how you look, use that as part of your development in preparation for the talk, but try to increase your energy levels as much as possible, even if it feels a little bit ridiculous at the time. What you feel is energetic will be less than what the audience actually sees. So feel free to really get into it and get some hands and energy movement happening. <laughs> Finally, on that last point, you wanna make sure you get your pacing right. It's very tempting when you get on stage and you've got the nerves going through that you just wanna get it over and done with and you just spit out the words and you try and get through as quickly as possible um, just so you can sit back down. But you really wanna make sure you take the time to explain the words, pronunciate, and make it at a pace that the audience can follow because remember you're talking about science to a lay audience and what seems logical to you or what you understand is gonna be a lot harder for the audience who don't, who aren't have any expertise in that field. So make sure, and this actually probably occurs back during when you're writing a script, that you write a script where you can present it nice and slow and concisely um, so you don't have to rush through and try and get as much out. And this leads into the previous video of trying to fit too much content in there. So just make sure you do your pacing well and just ease it out so that you have a good performance. 
Okay, so that's it today, guys. I hope you like those tips, both this video and the previous one. Let me know if you want some other aspects of a 3MT or a FameLab explained. I know we didn't really talk too much about developing the script itself. So if that's something that would be of interest, send me a message, comment below. Make sure to like or subscribe to this video because doing so will help amplify this channel and this video so that more signers can improve their presentation skills and ultimately achieve their career goals, whether that's inside or outside of academia. Lastly, as always, Nothing ventured, nothing gained, and I'll see you next week.